Okay, well, happy Monday afternoon to you all. It's about 2.15, 2.30 in the afternoon. Uh, I ended up working from home this morning, finished uh, all my major tasks, so now I'm going to get out for a beautiful ride. Uh, it's a fantastic day out here. The weather is just gorgeous. It's a little steamy, but, you know, that's Houston. It's uh, mid to high 80s right now and about 70-something percent humidity, so it's a little toasty. Uh, I'm riding today with uh, 3D gear, or not 3D, uh, 360 gear. Uh, I don't know if you can see it over my shoulder here, GoPro Max. Uh, got that on my uh, GoPro Seeker backpack. And uh, I've got the kit, uh, Cub kitted out with its uh, lightweight touring uh, stuff here. I'm testing this out today because I will be taking this bike most likely uh, up to Arkansas in a few days. Uh, so I'm just trying out the, the panniers and uh, some of the bags. Uh, I'll be up there for about four or five days at least, maybe going on six once all the travel is uh, included. But um, this bag uh, will be replaced with a bigger roll bag so I can put my tent gear and stuff like that in it. But anyway, seems to fit pretty well. Everything works, straps down securely, no problems. So anyway, Let's get this on the road. What I'm going to do today is uh, go make a coffee run. Another cub coffee run because we have run out of our good coffee. And if uh, time and traffic permits, then I will uh, make a run over to a customer's site to drop off some hardware that's in that tail bag and uh, maybe stop at my warehouse because I need to get a different work laptop that's got some files on it that I need. So, we'll see. Well, it feels good to get moving, I'll tell you that. Jacket and uh, backpack standing still without much air movement over the top. So my planned uh, trip to uh, northeast Texas and uh, I guess southwest Arkansas uh, is for uh, kind of a, a makeup ride for the scooter cannonball run. We weren't able to do the uh, cannonball this year because of the COVID-19 lockdown and uh, too many people had decided to just drop out and it wasn't going to work for them. Uh, didn't want to risk traveling interstate lines and things like that so that's okay i get it uh so a couple of the uh, forum members decided hey let's do another ride anyway and they started organizing something for a central texas uh gathering or at least central texas riders but it appears that uh these guys are coming from all over uh, louisiana and different places so that's great uh, there's going to be at least five or six of us uh, and it may grow to more than that uh, the scheduled date is May 22nd to meet in uh, Marshall, Texas, and then we're going to ride up to uh, Tallahena, Oklahoma, and do the scenic Tallahena Drive uh, on into the uh, Ozarks. So that will be uh, epically cool. I'm going to have a lot of fun on that ride. I haven't been up to Arkansas in three years and change, 2016, uh, almost four years now. Uh, I went up there in June 2016 and rode a uh, uh, very long trip uh, through the mountains, did a bunch of off-road forest runs. Ooh, big boy. Uh, I took a couple days and did the pig trail and a bunch of uh, bunch of scenic roads up there and uh, I planned my own route that I took off-road and I printed roll charts turn-by-turn -turn stuff uh, and had my GPS with me just for recording tracks in case I got myself lost somewhere and needed to 
backtrack out of there, but didn't need it. I just used the roll charts and everything worked fine. And uh, it was about 350 miles, give or take a little bit, uh, over the span of two days. And yeah, it was, it was fun. It was incredibly, incredibly hot. <laughs> In the middle of June, you know, static temps were you know, over 105. I think they were 107, something like that. And, uh, you know, with the, the heat index, humidity, and stuff like that, oh, it, was, it was pretty rough. But, yeah, as long as I'm off-road and exploring somewhere, I don't care how hot it is. As long as I have some water, I'm good. So this trip won't be uh, off-road, I think. I hope, kind of. Because <laughs> the Cub really isn't uh, cut out for that. These street tires don't do too well on gravel and soft surfaces, but we'll see. I really don't want to scar up the, the leg shield and ding up my header if I can avoid it. But if we do a little bit off-road, that's okay. I'm not sure what scoots everybody's going to be riding. Uh, there are a couple of local members or local prospects uh, for the Cannonball that wanted to ride, but they either didn't sign up or you know, dropped out or whatever. But one of the guys in particular had been shopping for a Cub, but when the COVID thing happened, he just backed off because he assumed, you know, well, Cannonball's not going to happen, so I'm not going to buy a bike. Or, uh, maybe, I'm not really sure what his rationale was, but that was probably it. That's what I was thinking. So. Now that he heard about this ride, he's like, oh, well, I'm interested. So I don't know if he's going to have time to buy a bike uh, for this ride. You know, it's less than two weeks away. Uh, and, you know, pounding out 1,500 miles or so on a brand new motor without doing your service interval might not be a great idea. So what I uh, told him is, hey, I've got bikes in the garage that are doing nothing right now. So uh, I've got the two PCXs, the 2015 and the 2016. And the cub here, so you know, you can borrow one of those if he likes. Of course, I need to meet him and <laughs> vet him out, <laughs> make sure that he, you know, seems like hey, I missed a wave. Uh, make sure that he knows uh, what he's doing. I'm sure he does. <laughs> Wouldn't want to put a total newbie on a scooter and send him uh, a couple states away, that could be tragic. So, <laughs> and I'm sure this is going to be posted after the event, so. You know, if that works out, uh, Evil Knievel, uh, <laughs> I'm not digging you. Just haven't met you yet. So, we'll see. <laughs> but I told him, you know, I got spare bikes. I've got, uh, you know, metric shit tons of camping gear and all kinds of stuff uh, extra. So, whatever he doesn't have, I can certainly uh, loan him for the trip. It's not a problem. I've got hammocks and tents and God, man. And there I am reaching for a clutch. There's no clutch. Um, <laughs> I've got so much gear. I could outfit a couple of Boy Scout troops. So back to the uh, alternate uh, scooter cannonball ride that we're going to be doing up to Arkansas. Uh, a couple of the guys have reported in what scoots they're going to be riding. And they are, uh, I want to say it was a Vespa 250. Or, uh, an Aprilia, Aprilia 250. I'm not sure. Uh, I know it was a 250 class scooter, so he's going to be the fast one in the bunch. Uh, I'll be riding either the uh, Super Cub or one of my PCXs. And then uh, I know another one of the guys uh, has got a Zuma 125 uh, that is a Mad Max Road Warrior bike. Uh, he's got a uh, single wheel bob trailer that he pulls behind this thing. He sent me the pictures of it. It's awesome. <laughs> That's exactly what I want to do. Uh, I've been shopping that for a while and I mentioned it to him in one of the uh, forum replies or threads or something like that. And he sent me uh, pictures of his setup. Yeah, it's awesome. He hacked up a Suzuki JR50 or something like that. To use the rear suspension and I can't remember maybe the the neck part of the frame and whatever the rear wheel all that maybe the front wheel I don't remember he he bastardized that uh, little bike and made a bob trailer out of it and it's off it, it's great it looks good he can strap cooler on there all kinds of gear trail it behind the bike without loading the suspension on the bike that's pretty cool so that bike will only have a max speed of probably 50-ish, uh, you know, 
Cup can definitely keep up with that. And uh, PCXs can certainly outrun that, so I'm not worried about uh, being the slow guy in the group. And my collar is making noise. So anyway, now it's uh, planning in the logistics time to get that done. I've got to make up my travel lists, uh, bike prep, pre-check kind of stuff, uh, make sure that I've got everything nailed down, especially if I'm going to be loaning one of my bikes to somebody. That's, uh, you know, I would hate for anything mechanically to go wrong or safety issue to happen uh, while somebody else is using the bike. That would be bad news. So I maintain all my bikes really, really well. So I'm sure it's not going to be a problem, but I just want to be sure. Absolutely, positively, extra sure. Well, it looks like the mall is still a ghost town. Of course, it is Monday afternoon, but I don't see a lot of traffic over there. A lot of cars. I'm guessing uh, shopping isn't really back in full swing yet. We've been doing a uh, staged reopening of the uh, state, trying to uh, get back to business and get the economy rolling again because, man, you know, the United States is a consumer economy and uh, if we shut down all of the, uh, the retail businesses and food outlets and everything else, uh, ugh, man, it will just get really bad here really fast. The headlines have been... Uh, talking about you know some of the meat processing plants shutting down due to COVID outbreaks and that sort of thing and you know I, I predicted that early on and I'm sure all the other analysts out there that are a whole lot smarter than I am did too uh, it, there are two or three ripples to these type of events and uh, the first ripple we've seen which is the economic impact the second one is the supply line disruption where you know food and goods uh, are disrupted because the workers are either unable to work or can't work because of restrictions or whatever else uh, and the third wave which I don't really want to talk about uh, can be a lot uglier but hopefully that doesn't come to pass we shall find out I'm sure everybody in these cars around me is looking at this camera rig on my back going what in the hell is that guy doing I'm a mobile Google camera rig, dudes. Be nice. I was exchanging notes uh, again late this morning, early afternoon, uh, with another UK viewer that uh, has watched the Cub videos, and he was asking and commenting on the uh, cyclical shift drum on this, uh, asking if we had that wraparound from fourth to neutral to first. No, we don't. Uh, I think that could be useful in some cases, but I talked about it on a previous ride uh, a few days ago, a few months ago. Hell, I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> our traffic here is so fast and aggressive. Uh, it always is uh, the best safety practice to be in the right gear at the right time. Uh, if you're not ready to accelerate, traffic is just going to clobber you. So the whole act of just coasting down and forth uh, to a stop and not uh, downshifting. Okay, well, what happens if you need to accelerate away? You're still going to either have to downshift or you're going to have to come to a full stop, wrap it to neutral, and then to first, which, yeah, that, that's going to take too long. Ah, itchy nose. Our allergy uh, stuff has actually dropped lately, which is good. And for... About a week, there was so much crap in the air, I was starting to wonder if I didn't have COVID. Snotting, sneezing, coughing, ugh. And we had a lot of uh, ragweed and cedar and all kinds of stuff in the air. Always gets me. <laughs> Bird flying by me. I haven't edited or posted that video yet. Uh, I was coming home on the Riker the other day through uh, George Bush Park back there where I made my little accidental detour earlier. Uh, 
I about took one of those uh, big egrets uh, right in the screen of the Riker. He picked up out of a drainage ditch on the side of the road with a buddy of his and started flying low right across the path of the road right in front of me and I'm doing 45 miles an hour. About had ourselves a little conversation. Jesus, that was close. <laughs> I bet that bird dropped the load right there. Oh, what is that yellow thing coming at me at 60? 45, whatever. <laughs> I thought he was going to have a piece of this windshield. Oh no, are they not open? Did I make a trip for nothing? I know they've been open. I drove by here and I saw cars. Oh, what's it say? Yes, we're open. Okay. Please use the rear entrance. Okay. They must have done that recently because I saw the, uh, I saw cars sitting out here the other day. Yeah. As long as I can get my coffee, I'm happy. And I'm going to pick up uh, some gourmet chocolates for my lovely bride uh, for a late Mother's Day present. Oh man, they don't have their little samples out anymore. I'm well. Don't recognize me with my bandit face, huh? Get some of those. So I can angle that camera down now. Ooh, I like the salted caramel. Sorry. Yeah. We all look like criminals or surgeons now. We don't know what you. You just look like an astronaut or something. I, I am. I am. <laughs> I'm. I'm the. Uh, what can I get? The moto you? freak. Um, yeah. I'm gonna do my usual. Give me okay. a five-pound bag of the golden pecan. Okay. Leaded. Got it. Uh, and what do you have on special that's good? Do you have specials? Oh, you know what? I need to put our board up. It's a creme brulee. Okay, give me a five pound bag of that. Of that, that, I need to put that out. I'm glad you asked me. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, and then I'm going to do a mix of the chocolates for a belated Mother's Day. Nice. Okay, well, you know, better late than never. That's right. It's the thought that counts. Exactly. And I know what I want. I know what I want. All right, can I get the I'm gonna do. Uh, well, I know what I want. I don't know what they want. So, I would say give me. It's gonna be a bunch of twos. Twos, 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 twos. Okay. So give me two banana split. Okay. Give me. Uh, two of the double chocolate truffle. Okay. And, 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 two of the strawberry. Okay. And two of the raspberry truffle. Okay, and then move it. In a box? Yeah, yeah, box what it up. Do? Do they make okay, so those, do you want them in a box uh -huh. or in a bag? Yeah, box them up, because okay. they'll, they'll go on the bike. Uh, and then I want one of these almond toffee bars. Okay. Uh, give me four of the chocolate salted caramel bar things here? Uh, dark or milk? Milk. And, 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 I want something like caramel. What's caramel? The, well, those bars that you just got, those salted ones are caramel. Oh, they're and, caramel inside? Yeah, and the bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. The brags have caramel in them. They're chocolate nuts and caramel. Ooh, okay, then the, the milk chocolate, not the dark one. The milk and the Yeah, two, two of those, yeah. Okay. All right. And get me out of here before I keep buying shit. <laughs> I 
Zwilling. Miyabi. Very nice knives. Oh, that's cool. I don't know if the camera's seeing that. That's awesome. Shows you the different stages of forging. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> they have all kinds of stuff here. It's uh, it's amazing. It's not your average hardware store. <laughs> Do a little walk through here. It'll take her a couple minutes to get all my stuff together. They've got kitchenware, hardware, tools, cookware, lodge, cast iron, good stuff. They have uh, dishes and china and crystal and all kinds of uh, fancy stuff. Not my speed, but you know, neat. Mm -hmm. oh, that's cool looking. It's like a swan. <laughs> that's really cool. I like that. Don't drop it or I'm gonna buy it. Rydell, that is really cool. I like that. Ooh. Fancy. I'm gonna have to get one of those. Ooh, that shelf is a little uh, wobbly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Appliances, all kinds of goodies. No, I've never been in this section. And I don't dare bring my wife here. <laughs> Fragrances back to the back. I'm Erin, I'm sweet. I'm Laura, and I'm savory. <laughs> Chocolates are ready. She must be getting the coffee. I hope these survive the ride home. It's going to be a little warm in the sun. I guess if I were thinking ahead, I would have brought some kind of a cold pack with me. All right, I put your coffee bags at the register, and that's your chocolate. Okay. You're set, man. Thank you much. Good to see you. Be careful. Yep. Thank you. I'll be back in a few weeks. <laughs> she knows me. I come in here so often. Do you have my coffee? Yeah, no. Right. Oh, you do. Okay. Is she bringing the ticket for it? Uh, I've got it right here. I think. I, okay. I think that's it. All right. Yep. Yeah, it says it. And I'm on your free. Yep. See that. And I didn't bring my sale flyer. You guys had a twenty percent something. If you yeah, can, we can do that. yeah, if you can throw that on there, or however it works out best. Yeah. You guys get enough money out of me. I come in here every few weeks and do the same thing. Lather, rinse, repeat. Oh my God, CBD energy drinks. Okay. I don't think I understand that fad. Okay. Uh-oh, a bean escaped. <laughs> Thanks, you too. I don't know if you guys just saw that on camera, but that is why I always leave the bike sitting out toward kind of the middle or the end of the spot. The guy in this uh, BMW wanted to come flying in here and they would have punted the bike had they not seen it sitting here. 
Uh, this zipper, yeah, that zipper would work. And I'm gonna get the stuff as far away from the sun as possible. Let's see what I can do here. I think, I think, I think, I think, I can get it under there. And all these can go on top. A bunch of SS, 20 SSDs in that bag there for a customer job that I'll be doing tomorrow. Okay, now I've got to unpack these guys. Or uncork them. See if I can keep you on camera. I hope this camera's recording. I don't even know. All right, one five pound bag. They're gonna smell good. Put my camping gear in there later and take it out wondering, oh my God, why does it smell so good? Get, go. Maybe I can roll that one one more. Toss the latch on there. isn't a discussion. Squeeze the air out of these a little bit and burp them uh, before you close them. There we go. Nice that they had relief valves on them somewhere. That one out a little bit. Okay then. Let it up with coffee and chocolates. Only the important stuff. I need to check and see what time it is. Three o'clock. Uh, now I better not do the uh, customer drop off. I was gonna do that, but considering I have chocolates here, <laughs> probably should uh, Think twice on that. <laughs> oh, feels good to get moving. It's so humid. Hmm. Could have taken an alternate route back, I guess. It didn't look quite this congested on my way through, or maybe I just didn't look. Oh, it's hot today. And sitting on this black top, you know, it's radiating heat up, plus all the cars blowing the heat on you. Oh, summer commuting in Houston, such fun. At least the chocolates aren't sitting on the top of the bag right underneath that black lid. <laughs> She's on the phone arguing with somebody. Or maybe she's just arguing with herself. We don't know. There's no subtitles for this. Man, if I felt like a hoodlum, I would just ride the sidewalk. Oh yeah, this is a double bushel of suck. Might as well, we're not going anywhere. Time to filter. I'm gonna melt before I get home. I don't know about the chocolate. Can we use the other lane? Is there another lane? Oh no, that's what the deal is. These lanes are split. You got one and three open. No, not even one and three. You got three and the turn lane. 
Mm, I'm gonna park over there in the shade while the traffic's uh, waiting for the red light. You think they'll hold my place in line? <laughs> yeah. Another viewer uh, was asking questions about riding gear and mentioning that he had noticed a lot of people in his area rode squid, you know, uh, no protective gear, short sleeve shirts, and no, uh, uh, I, don't even, I don't remember what he said, but basically no safety gear. And he was asking my thoughts on that. So I gave a little uh, dissertation on the whole safety thing. Uh, I am not one of the at-gat riders, you know, where all the gear all the time uh, because especially in Houston in these hot climates it's just not feasible uh, if you, I was full at gat in this I would die a heat stroke before I reach my destination so you just have to make your safety trade-offs uh, I go for the uh, the biggest impact items the stuff that's going to take the beating if you go down which is you know your head your hands your feet ankles uh, elbows, shoulders, any of your joints, your points, joints and points. That was what I was always uh, taught on the track. Uh, so uh, the one thing that I leave out of the whole at gat mantra uh, in my riding attire are the riding pants with the knee protection and hip protection. But again, it's just a, a heat management thing. Uh, Houston is already so hot. And when you're sitting in traffic like this, your legs are your flat parts, uh, and the sun is beating down on it, and your legs just get horribly, horribly hot in most of the riding pants that are out there. Uh, you know, the Kevlar reinforced this and that, blah, blah. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, they're great. If you go down, especially on the track, uh, you, you want knee and hip protection because you get beat up uh, and road rash, and uh, it's just no fun. Um, but again, you know, it's just, it's such an encumbrance. It makes it hard to walk around. Uh, the jeans are horribly hot. Uh, I've never had a pair that was comfortable to wear. Uh, I know things have advanced quite a bit over the last handful of years, but they're still hot. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, my jackets are always mesh, you know, textile mesh. They breathe quite a bit of air, uh, and they keep the sun off of your skin, which is a big deal. Uh, you know, sitting in this, uh, just direct sunlight without much uh, air moving past you and no shade, you're going to get sunburned and that uh, just adds to your heat load. Uh, so as counterintuitive as it is, having a mesh jacket over you, even if it's a somewhat dark color, uh, keeps you cooler than if you were in direct sunlight uh, because it's keeping the sun off of you and it's still a breathable fabric so you get the airflow to evaporate sweat and cool you off a bit. I've even gotten those uh, cooling vests uh, that you dunk in water and uh, throw over you and then put your jacket over the top of those. They kind of sort of work. They're not great. Uh, I'm not really a fan because if I were in a, uh, a drier climate, yes, they would be fantastic because you get that evaporative cooling. But here in Houston, it's so hot, you're not really gaining much. You're just putting a hot, wet blanket over you. So <laughs> now you are getting some evaporative effect, but you might as well just throw a wet washcloth over you. It doesn't feel much better. So now, you know, on the return leg of this trip, uh, back to thinking about uh, my upcoming Arkansas trip with the Cub or one of the PCXs uh, next Thursday, Friday, May 21st is when I'll be heading out, hitting the road. Um, today's exercise with all the video gear, chest rig, helmet cam, and the uh, 360 up above me here uh, is kind of a uh, trial run uh, to see if I can get all three of them running and stable without shutting down or screwing up like <laughs> one or more of them has done already today. Uh, because I plan to record most of that ride uh, and definitely I want to have the 360 cam running uh, out in the Arkansas Twisties. That'll be great have a POV 360 degree ride along and yeah, somebody can just tune in and watch whatever perspective they want. Uh, and if you haven't figured out on the 360 video yet, you can pause it anywhere along the stream. You can stop the, the video and still pan around. You can look at stuff. So you can rewind and scrub back through the footage and look at stuff that passed by from a different angle. It's pretty cool. 
and uh, if I can manage to get everything stitched together with the helmet cam plus the 360, then you'll always have the forward-facing view of either the chest cam or my, my chin cam or whatever uh, of what I'm looking at, plus its relative position uh, in the 3D space around it. So that'll be pretty neat. So I'll try to get some uh, stick cam footage on the 360s hanging out next to the bike and stuff like that where you can do the, the floating third-person view especially through the uh, twisties in the mountains. That'll be pretty cool. You get to ride next to yourself and watch. <laughs> okay, so. My Cub Coffee Run is concluded. Everybody's putting up new fences around here because we had a pretty nasty storm come through a week or so ago. Uh, 60 and 70 mile an hour gusts and downbursts, microbursts, and uh, a lot of our fences got mangled, ours included. Okay, well, home again, home again. If you made it this long, uh, thanks for tagging along. <laughs> and uh, I will catch you all on the next installment.